stop. Whatever's going on here, stop it immediately. Are you thinking of buying that next 100x token? Well, it could very likely be a scam, a rug pull, a worthless token designed to steal your money. No, God, please, no! So, how do you avoid such a fate? Well, in this video, we'll outline 10 ways that you can prevent yourself from being the victim of a rug pull. And not only that, but these handy hints will also save you from other types of crypto scams. This video could literally save you thousands, so don't go anywhere. So, first up, a little context. Now, one of the earliest and arguably the best known rug pull of all was BitConnect. BitConnect! Founded in 2016, BitConnect was an open source cryptocurrency that promised high yields for investors. This attracted more investors and drove the token skywards. However, in January 2018, BitConnect abruptly shut down, causing its token price to crash by 92%. BitConnect's founders had run off with more than $2 billion of investors' funds. And since then, rug pulls have become pretty commonplace scams in crypto. According to the researchers at Chainalysis, crypto rug pulls were responsible for more than $2.8 billion in illicit activity in 2021 alone. Other rug pulls you might have heard of include OneCoin, Thodex, and Squid Game, a crypto token that capitalized on the hype around the Netflix series of the same name. Anyway, it might surprise you to learn that not all crypto rug pulls are illegal. While some are outright scams to defraud investors, others tiptoe along the line of unethical behavior without actually crossing over into illegality. Now, broadly speaking, there are three types of rug pulls. The first type is called liquidity stealing. This is when token creators suddenly withdraw every single coin from the liquidity pool. Most rug pulls, including the ones I just mentioned, are examples of liquidity stealing. Then there are limiting sell orders. Now, this is when devs set up a barrage of sell orders at a low price, dramatically driving down the token's value. Then they simply buy up the tokens on the cheap before selling them at a much higher price. And third is what's called dumping. This is a more calculated tactic where a token's price is artificially inflated through various forms of market manipulation. Think large purchases or creating false price movements. Once the price skyrockets, the token is sold off at its peak and then the devs disappear with the profits. And I should also note that rug pulls can also be categorized as either hard or soft. Hard rug pulls are when developers embed malicious backdoors or hidden exploits into a project's smart contract. This enables them to illegally withdraw funds or tokens. Soft rug pulls, on the other hand, are more tactical. They rely on marketing hype to falsely boost a project's value. Then, once that value is inflated, the project is abruptly shut down and the founders flee with the money. Now, although they are unethical, soft rug pulls are usually not illegal. And this means there's not much you can do about it if you're a victim. Okay, so with that covered, let's get into the top ways that you can avoid a rug pull. First up, try to resist getting caught up in the hype around a project. I know this is easier said than done. Often, especially during peak bull market season, the prices of tokens seem to be shooting up and there's an almost uncontrollable urge to get in on the action and buy up tokens before they climb too high. It's that FOMO fever fueled by your friends, so-called experts, social media posts, telegram channels, and so on. The excitement builds in your stomach and you feel like you need to buy up as soon as possible to maximize your gains. And when you do this, you forget the fundamentals. You're caught up in emotion instead of logic, and this sows the seeds of your downfall. And this is what the scammers bank on. The best of them are masters at drumming up excitement around their projects. And when prices skyrocket, the hype cycle gathers speed and takes on a mind of its own. But it's a ticking time bomb of deception, and only the scammers know when time is finally up. So before you blindly follow what others are doing, just take a second. 
Take a breath, remember the fundamentals, and do your own research. And this tip, number two, is probably the most important advice of all. Before investing in any project, you need to do your own research. At a minimum, you should know what the project is all about, what its tokenomics look like, and what value it brings, if any. If you don't, or there's no good answer, you could be looking at a token with no intrinsic value. If that is the case, and you still decide to take a punt on it, well, you should know you're just straight out gambling. You're effectively predicting that you'll be able to sell the tokens at a higher price than you bought them and before the price inevitably collapses. And trust me, it will collapse. So, how exactly should you go about doing your own research? Well, first, jump on crypto tracking websites CoinGecko or CoinMarketCap and research the project thoroughly there. Here, you should look out for a few things in particular, including the project's trading volume and liquidity. Depending on the token, these sites will also have information about tokenomics and founders. As I'll explain later on in more detail, these are important data points to take stock of. And next, you should research the project's website. Look out for any signs of unprofessionalism. Poor spelling and grammar can be potential red flags, as are websites that are all style but no substance. You should be able to find a white paper and some media or third party links that you can easily verify against the project's tokenomics and founding team. The white paper should be reviewed closely. They're usually not as complicated as you might think. Keep an eye out for mistakes, plagiarism, over-the-top use of jargon, and a general lack of thoughtfulness. If you spot these issues, be suspicious. I also suggest checking the project out on Masari and Binance Research and jotting down any questions you might have about the project that you still want clarity on. Another tip is to research the project on platforms where you can find insight into initial coin offerings, or ICOs. ICO drops and ICO analytics are two great resources. Here, you should find information about the project's fundraising goals, token prices, market capitalization, and roadmap. So by now, at a bare minimum, you should know what the project does, what value it brings, if any, what the tokenomics are, and you should be assured that there are no inconsistencies in terms of its market volume, which could suggest price manipulation. Our next suggestion is to do your due diligence on the founders and core team. Look into the background of the team members. If you can't find details about this on their website or tracking websites, then search for them on Google, check out their social media accounts, and scour LinkedIn. If you have mutual connections on LinkedIn, check with them to make sure they're legit connections and professional. Remember, though, that not everything is as it seems on LinkedIn. Just because someone says they went to X college or worked at Y company, well, it doesn't necessarily mean that they did. Remain skeptical and try to corroborate information. Then run the founders' names through YouTube and try to find interviews with them. The further back in the past, the better. This is a great way to trace the founders' vision and see if they're on a roadmap that makes sense. If you can't find information about the team, it is a bit of a red flag. I mean, they might be strong privacy advocates, and that's fair enough, but they might also be scammers who are biding their time before disappearing into thin air with investors' money. So stay prudent. However, I should also point out that some of the biggest shysters in crypto have actively sought out the spotlight. And so, just because there is a lot of information out there about them, it doesn't necessarily mean they can be trusted. As ever, look for substance over style. Right, the next two pointers you'll find back on CoinMarketCap or CoinGecko. First, you should make sure that the project is on at least one prominent and reputable exchange. This is because prominent exchanges have quite stringent requirements in place for tokens to be listed there. This is in order to protect their customers and reputation. It's fair to say that highly regulated US-based exchanges like Coinbase have much stricter requirements in place than some of their counterparts overseas. But there is, of course, a trade-off to this. Coinbase only has around 200 coins and tokens on offer. By contrast, KuCoin has some 700 plus. And if you're looking for eye-watering gains, you're far more likely to find these among the higher risk, lower market cap tokens on KuCoin 
than some of the smaller pool of assets on Coinbase. Now, if you can't find the token on any reputable exchange, that could be a red flag. For instance, if it's only listed on a DEX like Uniswap, you should proceed with caution, as they don't have any listing criteria or requirements. To be clear, though, just because cryptos are on a reputable exchange does not mean they're immune from being a rug pull. It just means that they're less likely to be scams. And if you're looking for some of the best exchanges out there, then I'll refer you to our video on the top ones for 2024. That's linked to in the top right. Alternatively, if you wanted to get to trading straight away, then our deals page below has sign-up bonuses of up to $40,000 and fee discounts of up to 60% on those tier one exchanges. All right, now there are a few other things to check out on CMC or CoinGecko. The first is liquidity. Now, liquidity in crypto refers to how easily a coin or token can be bought or sold without causing significant price movements. You're looking for high liquidity projects. These are less likely to be manipulated by market scammers, as it's difficult for a single market participant to control the price action. You should check this alongside trading volume, which you can see here. Again, high trading volumes are a healthy sign. It means that there's a lot of market interest in the cryptocurrency in question, which can lead to more accurate price discovery and reduced price manipulation. Now, these must also be looked at alongside the tokenomics of a project, which, as mentioned earlier, you can find on CoinGecko, Project Websites, or Masari. Now, tokenomics refers to the supply, demand, distribution, and valuation of a cryptocurrency. In particular, you want to make sure that tokens are widely distributed and not centered around a small group of people, like, for instance, the project founders. If tokens are mainly in the hands of a few people, stay away. Even if it's not a scam per se, it means the token price will almost certainly crash if they decide to pull an exit. And next, you need to get a sense of what the project's community is like. If it's a new project, it's not likely to have much of a community to speak of. But if it's a bit more established, you'll get some good insights about the project from community sources. X is the first place to check out. See what the project is tweeting about and how much engagement there is with the posts. Do people like the project? Is there much of a community forming with questions and answers, the odd joke and insights? These are all good signs. And how engaged are the admins? Are they answering user questions or do their posts seem to be all about hype? Again, be wary of hype masters. You can gauge how people feel about a project overall by doing some sentiment analysis. Just scan the responses and look out for anything negative. Read these more closely to find out if there is anything to worry about or if it's just your run-of-the-mill spam. Discord and Telegram are two other places you should check out using the same process. And finally, on Reddit, you can often find questions about a project, including pretty forthright ones like, is X crypto a scam? Then it's up to you to cross-check the answer to see if it has any validity. Now, another thing you should check is the project's external affiliations. Where have the founders worked before? Is the company connected in any way to other companies or people? And if so, what's the reputation of these companies and people? Of course, you should ensure that the company you're thinking about investing in is not linked to any shady characters, including known scammers. Some characters in crypto move from one scam to another. Be careful, too, of people who flaunt their wealth. Orange Lambos and Diamond Chains scream insecurity, a desire to be recognized and irresponsible spending habits. These behaviors suggest that money comes way higher on their list of priorities than things like values or integrity. But even if the bad actor is reformed or the flashy crypto bro operates above the board, their reputations matter. And if their reputation is tarnished, it can damage the reputation of anything they touch, including the project you're thinking of investing in. Keep this in mind because it could make it difficult to attract legitimate investors and partners, which in turn will increase the likelihood of the project failing. The next point is an important one that isn't widely talked about. Has the project's code been audited? Now, there are a slew of security auditing firms out there staffed by code auditors and engineers. And typically, before major projects go to mainnet or in the event of a big upgrade, they'll recruit one or more of these firms to carry out an audit on their code. 
The job of security auditors is to examine a project's code and look out for any glitches that could be exploited by hackers. Auditors will look at common attack vectors, scrutinize the logic of source code, and flag anything to the project devs that ought to be fixed. Now, it's a very good sign when projects have gone through audits. It means security is likely to be of a high standard. It also suggests that the project in question is legit. Otherwise, well, they wouldn't have gone through the considerable cost and effort of an audit in the first place. That said, though, I should also emphasize that not all auditing firms are created equally. Some have a better reputation than others. As with the project self, do some due diligence on the auditing firm to determine whether or not it is legit. Now, our last two tips are related to risk management. They might not prevent you from being the victim of a rug pull in the first place, but they will help to reduce its negative impact on your life. So first of all, you need to have clear risk management processes in place as part of your investing strategy. You should know how much of your crypto investments you're prepared to put into tokens that promise high returns, but could just as easily leave you wrecked. This should be money that you won't lose sleep over if it does indeed go to zero. As a general rule, it's always wise to spread your bets and have a range of assets in your portfolio. Large market cap coins like BTC and ETH are on the safer end of the crypto investment spectrum. These can help counterbalance higher risk investments among smaller cap tokens. And on top of this, you should determine how much of your wealth you want to invest in crypto overall. The sector is new, volatile, and still largely unregulated. So it might be wise to spread your investments across a range of sectors, including things like real estate, stocks, bonds, and so on, as well as crypto. And whatever you do, don't go all in on a single project. You never know what could happen, and the reward just isn't worth the risk. Our final tip relates to trading. Always ensure that you reduce the impact of your investments dropping in value by using stop losses on exchanges. If you're unfamiliar, stop losses in crypto work similarly to stop loss orders in traditional finance. They're used by traders to limit their potential losses in the crypto market by automatically executing a sell order when the price reaches a predetermined level, the stop price. So, for instance, if you buy a crypto at $100 and put a stop loss at $90, the exchange will automatically sell if the price drops to $90. This is a really useful way not only of avoiding the worst impacts of scams, but also minimizing your losses from your run-of-the-mill bad investments. Now, of course, you need to be smart about the level you set your stop loss at. Given the volatility of crypto, there's a chance that the price in the example I just mentioned could drop momentarily to, say, $89 before shooting up way above $100. If that's the case, then your stop loss didn't work out for you. But, used wisely, stop losses are excellent risk management tools for investors. Now, overall, this video shows it pays to be informed and to be skeptical when it comes to investing. It's important to try and control your emotions when investing and let logic and a sound strategy be the driver of your decisions. And if you want to know more about investing, I'll leave a link to our ultimate trading strategy video in the description below. Okay, so there you have it, folks. Now, what did you think? And what other tips do you have for people to avoid being the victim of a rug pull or other type of scam? If you like this video, do drop us a comment, smash that like button, and subscribe. If you're looking for reviews of altcoins and would like to know about Team Coin Bureau's investment strategies and portfolio allocations, be sure to check out the Coin Bureau Club. We also have a Discord channel where I and the team chat with our followers where we share tips and market-moving news and much more besides. Be sure to follow us on X, TikTok, and Instagram too, and check out Coin Bureau Clips for exclusive interviews, live streams, Q&A, and more. Right, I'd better be off. Places to be, people to see, you know how it is. My name's Guy, thanks for watching, goodbye.